And then we're going to jump into our second match of the night. Um, that'll be me. I chose to pick uh, qualification 20. Uh, sort of why I picked this one is, you know, due to the, the nature of the def- defensive rules of this game, there were really only two strategies or robot configurations to employ this season. You either had all three robots on offense or you had two robots on offense and one on defense. Like those were your options. What you did with that breakdown, you know, there's tons of strategy, but that's where your robots were. Um, generally the latter, meaning the two offense, one defense was chosen. Uh, this was due to the difficulty of, you know, coordinating three offensive robots in a very tight playing field. Um, I believe all the Einstein alliances ran the two plus one strat. Um, I checked them all real fast, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they all ran the two offense, one defense. Uh, it was definitely the norm for elimination play throughout the season. This includes IRI, uh, where, you know, you look at that. If you th- if you think of an alliance that's going to play triple offense, and you look at that number one seed at IRI, it's twenty fifty six, eleven fourteen, and one ninety five. You're like they're probably all going to play offense. No, one ninety five went and played defense. Um, so even with three top tier offensive robots, they still ran the two plus one. Um, however, in qual matches, this varied at times depending on the capabilities of robots involved. Um, so in qualification twenty. We're going to look at what may be the best execution of triple offense in all of FRC this year. Um, it's So we're going to be focusing on the uh, Blue Alliance in this match, featuring 3478 Lambot out of Mexico, 5406 Celtex out of Canada, and, oh, look, it's 2910 again, uh, Jack in the bot <laughs> <laughs> on the Blue Alliance. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and break it down. So we're going to go ahead and start it, and uh, we're going to run through Sandstorm real fast. Uh, the video starts a few seconds into Sandstorm. but uh, So we'll just run it, and then we'll pause it uh, at the end of Sandstorm and sort of get a lay of the land uh, when we pause. So at the end of Sandstorm, we see over at Lysette, we'll be focusing on blue. Uh, we see 5406 has put one hatch on the mid-level of the near rocket and have uh, retrieved a second hatch, but we are you know haven't scored it quite yet, so they're down in the lower corner. Uh, 2910 has placed two hatches on the far side of the cargo ship, uh, and 3478 has missed their hatch on the nose cone of the cargo ship. Um, so then we're going to go ahead and roll it. Uh, until, so we're going to take about 10 seconds. We see 2910 immediately go to the far loading station for a hatch, while 5406 uh, scores their panel picked up in Sandstorm, and then we're going to pause at 125. So what happens next, we're going to see a key component of what makes this an effective triple O strat. Uh, 2910 is going to switch to the far feeder station while Lambot is in their way. Or I shouldn't say in their way, but Lambot's, I'm sorry, they're going to switch to the near feeder station while Lambot is using the far one. Uh, Most teams you'll see get locked into one or the other feeder stations for whatever reason, generally because they only want to work with their own human player, which doesn't make any sense when it just falls out of a slot, but whatever. Um, but generally, you'll see a lot of robots will stick to the same feeder station for an entire match. Um, this is the downfall of most triple offenses because it ends up being a lot of waiting in between picking up game pieces because you have two robots doing the same uh, feeder station. So we're going to go ahead and roll it. And you'll see 2910 sees Lambot in the way. They come and switch over to this near side and they go and get another hatch uh, while 5406 to do the thing. 2910. Uh, scoring on the low level of that rocket while 5406 fills up the cargo in that middle layer. Uh, we're going to pause it right here at 108. Um, so here, coming up, we're going to see Celtex do the same thing that uh, I was just talking about. 2910, we see down uh, near the near feeder station uh, while Lambot is scoring on the far rocket. This is going to leave the uh, far station free, so 5406 heads over there for their next hatch rather than wait or get in 2910's way. So we're going to go ahead and roll it and watch that play out. Let's see. So there's 2910 scoring. Going back. I may have had you pause a little too early. But yeah, so 546 has now gone to the far station. And then coming up at 90 seconds, we're going to see another switch. We don't necessarily have to pause, but we'll see 2910. Um, they'll score a hatch down at the bottom. They see Celtex. Now they go to the far station right, and uh, grab their next hatch. So we're going to pause coming up at about 80 seconds. And in a second, we're going to see just 2910s, like, I'm talking to people, to run an effective triple offense, like, you almost need a swerve bot, whether that's 2910 or whoever. It's, they, you just need that maneuverability 
because we'll see um, if we go ahead and play it. We'll see 29-10 and 34-78 on the far side of the field. They just perfectly time their passes of each other. 29-10 just nudges themselves out of the way as Lambot's driving by. Um, 29-10 switches feeder stations again at 70 seconds. I'm going to pause it coming up at about 60 seconds. We'll see a... Uh, now we see... 2910 is going to switch to the coming up. 2910 is going to switch to the cargo ship since Celtex and Lambot are both on their rockets or keeping those up and the lower levels on the rockets are pretty much filled. Um, so we're going to go ahead and roll it. You see 2910 sort of start to drive to that rocket, but then they switch and go to that cargo ship where they go. And then we see that bounce we were just talking about where it takes them that second shot to get it in. At 50 seconds, we see Celtex complete that first rocket. And then at this point, we see Celtex now switches sides of the field. They're going to go help Lambot finish that robot the rocket, um, leaving 2910 completely free. We're going to pause it at 35 seconds coming up. And then now we're going to see a slight switch in play. So like I said, we now have 546 and Lambot on the same side of the field, while 2910 is left free over on the near side to us to sort of finish up their side of the cargo ship. Um, and now, since they're both working on the same rocket, and it's all paneled up at this point, I believe, they are going to take turns waiting for the cargo. And you'll see them, rather than try to jostle and get in each other way, they they go to the side, they'll wait, they'll come. So go ahead, and we're going to play. And so you see 5406 waits there while Lambot is lined up and scoring. Lambot turns and goes. Now it's 5406's turn. Do I have those robots? Yeah. And then they just keep taking turns to fill up this cargo. Um and then this, they work on that, and they eventually they fill up that second rocket as well. Um, just like I said, they're just taking these turns. We see Celtex go to the far side to grab a cargo to stay out of the way. Um, at 10 seconds left, we see 2910 ejected their cargo and went to go climb. Real fast climb on their part. Uh, Celtex climbs up to level 2, 3478 slides into that park, and that is where the match ends. So our final count of game pieces... Uh, for everyone, we got 5406 who did four hatches and eight cargo. We got 3478 did four hatches and three cargo. And 2910 did seven hatches and four cargo. But along with that, they have two cargo from their sandstorm hatches that they trapped in. So that's kind of an additional two cargo. They just didn't cycle those cargo. Um, so that's that match. Final score ends up being uh, blue 127 or it's a 117 unpenalized. Uh, there was a tech file you saw early in the match when Red crossed over during Sandstorm. And then uh, they got the 4RP, and then Red had the 80 and 1RP. This was the second highest score without penalties of the entire competition. Only beat out by a later match. Um, I had it written down, and now it's gone. But um, <laughs> So it was the second highest score of the entire competition. This includes Elims. This includes everything. Um, both because they were able to effectively do this... Um, the triple offense combined with the fact that red never sent a defender. Like, I don't know what the strategy for red was because those, I don't know if they thought they could outgun blue or if they thought that they were just going to sort of call it, call it as it is and try to get two RP out of the loss, which I think is maybe more likely. Um, Cause I think that's important. Um, to uh, keep in mind is that sometimes a loss is okay, and sometimes you have to know you're going into a match and that you're going to lose, but you need to make the best of the situation. So they uh, red misses a call, red misses their um, climb at the end, so they weren't able to get both ranking points, but they did get the one for the rocket, um, even with all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. echoing yeah. some of the stuff we saw in chat. Um, this strategy under defense, not sure if it would work the same. Um, probably not, but it's um, it definitely... <laughs> a, <laughs> I mean, if, if you've got four robots on one side of the yeah. field, you're not going to be able to execute this level of flow that they've got going there. But definitely very interesting and there's, very impressive. There's, there's, It's very rare that triple offense works when somebody sends a defense bot. Like, yeah, it's just way too crowded. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes it too easy for the defender to defend two robots at once, making them twice as effective. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, yeah, comments, uh, like I said, yeah, from from Kevin. 
Uh, it seems to be like chip offense largely work because their opponents played no defense on them. Like we kind of said, yeah. Um, if, if, if a defender came over, I think this match plays out. I don't know if the result plays out any differently, mm-hmm. but I, but the, the play switches just because, and you of, know, we could see 29, 10 doing the same thing they did in, um, Qual's nine where they pop off a few panels and then head over and play deep. Yeah. I think do, they, do this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They, if, if, if red sends a defender, I think blue sends 29, 10 once they've popped in a few, like that's, I think got to be the plan. I don't think, you know, you don't know going in. Uh, let's say somebody put in on a highest, highest score was 141 in Qual's 21. We got your back PJ. So thank <laughs> you. I don't know if that's without penalties, but um, I don't remember what this was. Cause I looked at them all. But, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, coordination is super important. Uh, so that was kind of what I wanted to focus on is, and sort of look at This is why communication is so important with your, um, drivers. Like you could see me down in the lower left corner. So I was down on the blue side of the field for this match. And I was close enough that I could hear them. I could hear blue and sort of their drive coaches, like bouncing back and forth. I couldn't tell you which one I didn't look. Cause I was watching the robots who had the, uh, who, who was sort of coordinating the entire effort. It was, but it was, I was close enough to hear that, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of talking back and forth, which is definitely something that you need. And that's, I think a lot of teams struggle with is this communication. Like you're three teams, you're an alliance. You're not, you're not three robots on an, on three separate islands. Like you are accomplishing a, a combined goal. You should be talking to your other alliances. Teams get too zoned in on their own robots. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, so, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one thing they won by a huge amount, and they like they had me a little worried at the end. They went, went in ten seconds, and no one's going towards the hab. Yeah, and I'm just like, you guys have this win. You should really like secure the extra ranking point with the climb. But they pull it out. Perfect yeah. climb at the end. So yeah. it worked out. Twenty nine ten has like a sneaky fast climb. Yeah, it's um definitely one of those that just slides in they're like oh that's mm-hmm. not as fast as i expected it to be 